What's up guys, I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm gonna take you through a step-by-step -step process on how we can properly install plugins for Final Cut Pro 10. A few months ago, I posted a similar video, which you guys can still check out. And through that video, I've received a ton of questions about people still having issues. So I've noticed a lot of the mistakes people are making, so I wanted to create this video once again, take you through the step-by-step -step process, and also offer some tips and insights along the way so you guys can avoid those mistakes. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. All right guys, so the first thing we want to do is make sure you quit out of Final Cut Pro if you have it open by hitting Command Q. That is an important first step in the installation process for any plugin. So once we've done that, if you wanna follow along step by step, I have left a link down below in the description of this video. It is the very first link that will take you to a Dropbox folder called Juan Nino Transitions. And it's just a couple of transitions I created myself for Final Cut Pro. They're completely free for you to use and I think it will be helpful if you wanna follow along step by step. So you can go ahead and hit download and that will save a zip drive into your downloads folder in your finder. You can double click the zip drive and inside the new Juan Nino Transitions folder are the two transitions. They're actually pretty cool. I think you guys will enjoy them. But regardless of where you've gotten your plugins from, the installation process will be the same. Now I think it is important to mention that if you're buying plugins from Pixel Film Studios, from Motion VFX, these plugins will come with installation software, so this process will be automatic. But if you're running into issues, knowing the process could prove helpful. So first thing we want to do before we buy any plugin or we download any plugin is make sure our system can actually run the plugin. So just because your computer can run Final Cut Pro, it doesn't mean it can run every single plugin. So I have an example here from Pixel Films. This is a map plugin. And if I head down here into system requirements, minimum requirements, you guys can see that it's telling me I need a minimum graphics card of three gigabytes, RAM, eight gigabytes. This is really important. This is one of the most common mistakes I see people making and I'm guilty of it myself that I bought a plugin, I didn't check the system requirements and then it just wouldn't work in Final Cut Pro. So make sure you check this and then compare it to your computer. So the best way to do that is head back here, go into the Apple icon about this Mac and right here in an overview, we can see our processor, our memory, and our graphics. So you can compare that to the minimum requirements and know that your computer can run the plugin before you buy it or download it. All right, so let's exit out of that. Now, my finder window might look a bit different than yours, and that's completely fine, but this is the first tip I want to give you guys. If I head over into Finder, Preferences, and the sidebar option, you guys can see that I have everything checked. And that's because I like having all these shortcuts. Now, you don't need to do that, but if you're a Final Cut Pro user, I highly recommend that you check downloads, movies, and all the locations. This will help finding folders. It will be a lot easier. It will just make the process a lot quicker. So make sure, once again, you check downloads, movies, and all your locations. So let's exit out of that. Now, if you see that my icons are a bit different, that's just because I did the upgrade to the new operating system, Big Sur. So that is the only difference in that. But once we've done that, let's open up a new tab on our finder by hitting Command T. Now make sure, making sure this second tab is selected, I'm gonna head over into locations and select Macintosh HD. This is the local hard drive on the computer and this is the other mistake I've seen a lot of people make. They're installing or saving the plugins on iCloud Drive or in the wrong folders or in an external hard drive Final Cut Pro will only recognize them if they're directly in the local hard drives, your Macintosh HD. This is really important. So make sure Macintosh HD is selected, users, Juanfer, that's my computer, that's my name, movies, motion templates, and here are the transitions, titles, generators, effects. So this is where we want to drop our plugins in. So the next thing that's important to mention is make sure you know what you're installing. So I know that these are transitions. So I wanna put them in the transitions folder. If they're titles, generators, effects, so forth, make sure that you're dropping them in the right folders. So if I head back into the first tab and I try and drag the folder to the transitions folder, you might get this little symbol right here. It won't allow you. That's okay. We can just simply hit command copy and then command paste. You guys can see that it is now in our transitions folder, the Juanino transitions. Here are the two transitions. Now, a little tip, if, you wanna, if you're not sure if it's a transition or a title, 
you can check the actual file, right? So transitions, they will be .motr. You guys can see right there. So .motr is a transition. A title will be .moti. A generator will be .motn. And an effect will be .moef. So that is how you can different, differentiate for yourself whether or not it's an effect, transition, a title. And so once again, transitions are M-O-T-R. All right, guys, so now we've installed the transition. So let's open up Final Cut Pro again. And if we head down here, this is the transitions. You guys can see that here is the newly installed folder, one unit transitions, and here are the two transitions. All right, so this is another thing I've noticed people making. And once again, if you're a beginner, it's totally okay, but they look in the wrong place in Final Cut Pro. So for example, they installed the title, but they're trying to find it here where transitions are or effects. So this is effects, this is transitions. So they're not seeing it because they're just looking in the wrong area. So once again, transitions, effects are down in the bottom right. And then if we head over here, we have titles and generators. So it's important to check in the right place to make sure that you installed it correctly. All right, so if you're seeing the plugin, you've installed it correctly, you are good to go. But let's say that you're having trouble finding these folders and it's completely okay if you are. So I'm gonna help you there. So by default, they should be there because if you installed Final Cut Pro correctly, they are created there by default. But if you're having a hard time finding them, another way to, if you've checked the, the movie shortcut is just going to movies motion templates, they should be there. But let's say that they're not, all right? Let's say that you just don't see these folders. Well, if you head into the movies, you can create them. So if you're not seeing your motion templates folder, you can select, right click, new folder, and you can create the folder yourself. So motion templates. And then the next thing that's important to do is that you wanna make sure it's localized. So if I go back to my original motion templates folder and I select get info, let me bring that up here. You guys can see that right there under name and extension. It's motion templates that localized. That means it's synced with Final Cut Pro. So if you're not finding the folders, then you create them. You need to make sure that they're localized. So for example, with this one, I would right click it, get info, bring this over here. And then I would add in the extension myself, dot localized. Now, this is, a, this is something I haven't seen happen to anyone personally. Right, if you know where to find the folders, they should be there, but just in case, just know that you can do it yourself, all right? So I'm gonna exit out of that. I am going to delete this folder that I don't need, and the same process would be for the transitions, titles, and generators folders, right? If you're not seeing them, then you create the motion templates folder first, and inside the motion templates folder, you would create the transitions folder. You know, if I hit get info on this one, you'll also see that it is localized. So that is really the process. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I hope that it made sense. I hope these little tips really help you guys out. Um, you know, as far as avoiding the mistakes I've seen a lot of people make, but once again, local hard drive, extremely, extremely important that you save the plugins in there. Local hard drive, users, Juanfer, that's what I named my computer. So yours could be Peter, uh, Megan, you know, whatever you named it, movies, motion templates, and there will be your folders. All right, now, another way, and the last way I'll show you guys to find these folders is by going to go, this option right here, go, computer, Macintosh HD, users, once again, whatever you named your computer, movies, motion templates. So a lot of ways to get there, but you know, I just, I love the shortcuts. So, you know, I prefer just going to my Macintosh HD once I've selected the locations or the movie shortcut. All right, guys, I hope you found the video helpful. If I can help in any way whatsoever, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. The best way to do so is through Instagram, but I am also going to leave my email and my WhatsApp number down below in the description. So if I can help, if you have any questions about Final Cut Pro 10, please send me a message and that's it for today. Keep creating. Final Cut is an awesome piece of software and I'll be back soon with some more tutorials. I'll see you guys. Peace.